Hello everyone. Welcome to another update of my Tropical Island using Unreal Engine 4.26. And in today's video, I'm going to go over a few updates and I'm going to show you some cool stuff to help you optimize your game just a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and jump in straight right into the overview. Now, this is not a simulation. This is just uh, within the editor itself. Um, what has changed? So since the last update, I have added a couple new stuff to the landscape locations wise and a um, couple areas for loots and have been building more new locations. Uh, also fixed a couple lighting issues with some of these really dark trees at the have really, really dark light. So hopefully this will get fixed within Unreal Engine 5 in the future, once it's uh, been upgraded to Unreal Engine 5. Um, but that being said, here's some leftover barrels. This was supposed to be, well, or going to be a build of a fishing dock or abandoned one or destroyed one that hasn't really been progressed much yet. But uh, here is a couple of um, other barrels that I've added in certain locations. Again, you might be able to find some of the stuff. And um, I believe within these barrels, you can pick them up. Let's check on it real quick. Yeah, so there is different static meshes. It's a blueprint, which means when it comes time to it, you'll be able to pick up all these items in there. So regardless of what's in here, bones or stones, you'll be able to pick all of that up in the future. Uh, same applies to this section over here. Uh, it has some sort of um, handmade spears. You can see there's one, two in here, and I think there are a few over here. Yeah, they're sitting in this barrel. So you'll be able to pick those up and um, make sure that you can use them for fishing or whatever you might be using. It could be used as a weapon or something like that. So let's actually move that, um, I don't know, maybe over here, because that was like protruding right through um, rocks. It was a good location there, but again, I think up front will be pretty cool like that. And then I'll put some boxes here or whatever later down the road. So let's go ahead and uh, dive in underwater real quick. I want to show you guys a small new location here. So as you go underwater here, we have a couple crates that are underwater, which is from a sunken ship there was used previously for probably crab fishing or something like that. And you can see that they were somewhat scattered here across the shoreline of these corals. So with a couple other, let's uh, make this bigger screen, with a couple other barrels and um, other items that you will discover. I think there is an anchor here somewhere. Okay, so here it goes. There's an anchor there. And I think this empty spot right here will be dedicated for uh, leaving some leftovers from the ship. So I don't have any wood leftovers here that's been sunk into the ground and covered with sand yet. But I think it's a good start to um, set up some of these uh, locations where all of this has sunk at the same time. So these barrels obviously will have to line up with the ship itself. We have a couple barrels over there and then barrels over here. Uh, the individuals one obviously would probably have to be on the sideways if they were like falling off the ship. But if they're sitting up like this, we'll have to probably align them all together in one area and recreate a destroyed ship. So it's going to be obviously populated here way more. But it's a good start. Uh, this is going to be all dedicated to one area. I have added uh, one of the corals in here. Now again, this is... Let's go ahead and press play. Uh, since I just uploaded this project, it's going to take a moment for it to generate all the vegetation. It might not actually do it right now. Uh, but here is one of the corals that was spawned. And you can see that it also has bubbles coming out once in a while. And it had this really strange effect. I don't know what this dust is supposed to be, but it hasn't rendered it. Here we go. It's going to take a moment for it to uh, process. Uh, later down the road for areas like this that have corals, I'll have to adjust the cold distance on this. This is going to be 
from like a subport level so by the time you swim up to here it will load up at much shorter distance because if you look uh, farther back as far you can see it gets darker and darker out there in the world and uh, to avoid all of these items being spawned anywhere in the world as you travel or as you explore the landscape uh, you'd want to set up some cold distances and i think i'm going to do it individually for each um, particular blueprint that's in this world and um, that being said i will show how you can do the same thing with landscape streaming so from my previous videos if you've seen the screen uh, for the world composition if you're using the level streaming you've noticed it looks a little bit different now than it previously did so we have uncategorized which is nothing in here uh, i think this is by default i don't know how to change them like i can't delete them and i can't rename them so if anybody knows how to do that just leave a comment below that would be great to learn um, if you're new to this in order for you to add a new one you just press on the plus button here and then you can give it a name whatever it might be and then a streaming distance and then when you create that uh, this is what it looks like so for my streaming distance of 20,000 you see how I have a landscape streaming at 50k I should have named it at 20k I wasn't sure how exactly it looked like or how it would work uh, but at least when you hover over it it tells you uh, what's the streaming distance so for this one over here for the 20,000 I have all the landscape pieces selected except for the three that's in the center and those are all the way in the back over there and the reason for that is because of the mountains uh, again I think maybe some of these landscapes that are land I would have to go back and re-tag them and especially when we start to expand the landscape, the rest of it is going to be ocean around this sector. So who knows, maybe I'll move some of these that surrounding the landscapes will be added to the uh, streaming of 50. And then you can obviously say right click and then you can say move selected actor to a particular level right here, uh, assigned to layer. You can do whichever you, it might be in or you want to transfer to so if it's not working out distance wise you can switch them uh, currently it's under landscape streaming so you can do streaming 50k right which will be near this one and right here you can only you see that i only have three which is farther out there in the world now obviously above ground it doesn't look too good because you can't see all of it maybe you can actually i haven't actually played it yet but i will demonstrate that to you and show you how awesome it actually really is so let's go ahead and jump underwater right so that way you guys can see uh, where we at uh, I currently have these four being streamed to the world because uh, I've opened them All right but when I press play you will see that these two are not going to be lit so anything that's colorful and lit it means it has been loaded to the level and anything that has is gray I haven't loaded up so when you select them and hold control you can select the second one then you right click and you're gonna go ahead and say load all right so this has been loaded up to the world and we know that it has because you can now start seeing a little bit portion of the mountain over there appearing and other things but remember if you're going to be underwater you're not going to be able to see it uh, if you're above ground you won't see some of the landscape either so you got to be careful in how you calculate this it would be nice if you can actually separate this based on the height in uh, z value so that way based on the height so as soon as you go above the water you can actually see further than you would underwater and what i mean by that not actually physically see it but for the engine to load those sections a little bit shorter and farther depending on the environment you're surrounded with but that being said let's go ahead and press play and you can see automatically it goes into darkness and we only have these two sectors open because we're within the 20,000 of a distance. And again, since I started the simulation, it will go into procedure to generate all of these grass types that I've created and seaweed and corals. But as I begin to swim 
underwater or above water, it doesn't really matter. You can see that it begins to open up and discover new landscapes, which is really cool. Uh, this saves you a lot of performance because what it does is as soon as you move in or move away from a location, it will automatically get rid of all that unnecessary information that you're not looking for to render while you're doing other stuff. So very cool feature. Again, I will be learning more about this and hopefully implement it a little bit better in the future, uh, optimize it a bit, and who knows, maybe we can divide these levels even smarter sections or leave them the way they are and just uh, add more to it. Now, I also have improved a little bit on, I would say half of the vegetation that I had. So if we were to look at our folder with vegetation, Let's go ahead and find it first uh, under my blueprints. So I have about 33 different, well, except for these four. I don't know what this even is. What is this? I'll have to figure this out. I don't know what this is yet. Something new. I um, don't even know how this got here. White, yellow, and yellow. I don't know what that is. But we have 29 different vegetation that is procedurally, not procedurally, but the setup through a blueprint. And I think I am halfway done, or maybe one third, on optimizing with cool distances on each individual plant. So if we were to open up, let's say a bamboo, you have four of them and which within each static mesh of that blueprint, we have a cool distance that you can set up as well, which will then reduce or increase based on your settings. Now, I also have added LODs for some of those. So that of course, they will have to get optimized uh, based on a screen size of your viewing. You will see some of the static meshes change the amount of vertices and polygons it has. I'm surprised it taking so long to, uh, for whatever reason, anytime you reopen your engine and whenever you work with blueprints, uh, it takes forever to open them up, especially if uh, you haven't worked with them in a while. So it's gonna open up all these attributes. And once it's open up, opens the editor, I'll show you within the static mesh. I could have probably just, uh, Click on a static mesh itself, find that in the system. But here is our bamboo. And over here, when you go to the top search details, if you type in distance, uh, you can see that the desired max draw distance at 9,500. Now with these numbers, I'll have to still play around and see if they actually go in the effect. Um, but the way this works is for every static mesh within the blueprint, you have to set this up individually. So either you will have to select all of them or individually and um, designate desired max draw distance. Now, minimum, always keep it at zero. Do not adjust that, I don't recommend. Uh, second thing, once you're done with that, you would open up your static mesh. And here we can optimize it a little bit more. So some of the stuff is set to uh, small props. Uh, sometimes I use foliage, depends on what it is or large props for trees and things like that, because sometimes they would go away faster than I want them to. But you can also do it automatically, of course. So it comes with the four LODs. And if you don't have this setup where you choose one and it gives you LODs, you have to change your um, a document within the engine folder. I think it's engine.init and within that f file, I have a video actually related to that showing you how you can change it. But if you look at the LOD zero, as I move away from the screen, it changes to LOD one. And if you look at the triangulation, so it goes from 1000 to 500 and then 200. And obviously this is quiet and then 132. So this is like, if you're within distance, obviously it's way too far out. Maybe it can be optimized a little bit better in the future, but I think for right now it's not too bad. The next 
other cool update I have for you guys to show you is flowers. Remember previously I've mentioned about adding some flowers and I think I had like one or two in it. So now if we're to uh, zoom in a little bit over here, you can see that now you have all these different flowers grown in different areas and um, you can pick them up. Now, obviously at the moment, I don't have any interaction with any plants, but the idea for the future is to include a system where you can individually pick up uh, sections of the flowers. So it's not going to be individual flower, but it will be by colors and it's going to be by small sections. So we have one over here, uh, the yellow ones over there in the back, and then some one, red ones in the center here. We have about like four of them. You can see one, two, three, four. And again, you'll be able to pick them up and use them for different either herbal recipes or maybe even use it for like dye and stuff. So that way you can um, change color of your outfits and armor. You know, like how they do it some other video games where they use flowers for dye. It's going to be pretty cool, I think. I don't know. We'll come up with a lot of different stuff. Maybe you can pick them up and reuse them to create uh, some decoration um, or decorative related stuff. I don't know, whatever you guys come up with, really. I mean, there's so many cool things you guys can come up with. But yeah, so these flowers are kind of spread out in certain areas. Now, there's certain, sometimes, you know, they're in a shadow. And obviously, if the sun travels, they're in the light. So not all the flowers are in a shade because I know they usually grow in the light. Uh, some of them probably need partial shading, but I think it's turning out not too bad. Um, what else? What else we got here? So I don't know why this is here. I never uh, got anything to do with that. I get rid of that for the moment. Now some of those cliffs have changed in sh uh, these dark shadows. I think I've uh, fixed some of those. Actually, not this one. So for this one right here, if we were to select it, which is my uh, static mesh right under here. We'll do um, was a dynamic light. I think it's a uh, scroll down. I should be able to find it. No, it's this. It's not under light. I think it's called distance field. So if distance field light and affect distance field lighting. So if I click on that. It will get rid of all these dark artifacts. Now, I don't really know if I'm going to have to turn this back on later down the road in Unreal Engine 5, um, but I will have to play around with it. But if you do suffer with some of these ugly, dark looking textures on some of your static meshes, so make sure you do that and you just get rid of that or uncheck that mark. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Now, Looking some of these areas over here, you can see the flowers are also growing on some of those locations. I've added these rock formations that are very cool too, in a sense. They uh, not this one in particular, but I'll find another one that actually has already flowers on it, and then um, you add more on top of it, and it kind of looks pretty cool. So here is the continuation construction of this abandoned city, or location should i say because uh, i haven't come up with the storyline behind it <laughs> yet to what it is and what was the purpose of it i'm just kind of building to it really i don't have a, a written storyline i don't have any um back up like uh, art ideas or anything like that i'm kind of just creating whatever comes to my mind and then from there we'll be able to create a storyline and obviously a background to all the locations and what their purpose is. Uh, fortunately, that's how my brain works with Unreal Engine. And I just don't have time and people to do all the other parts to have that done for me. So here I am visually creating locations and then from there, hopefully we can utilize that and create something interesting. So this is the portion I was talking about. You can see that there are some uh, purple, light purple looking flowers over here. And obviously it's not collectible, but we have some over here that are kind of growing around it. I haven't been able to curve them to fit in here, but of course I can minimize them and things like that and fit them on top of there and all that. But I can, I think I might even have individual ones where I can place them, but I'll have to check with that later. Uh, that being said, uh, let's go ahead and fly through a portion of this construction. So. It's obviously still under construction and hasn't been finished. 
I'm going to have a section dedicated over here where you'll be able to, let's see, I think it was right here. Yeah. So I'm going to build some ladder formation over here or steps, stone steps over here to go up there. And then obviously it's going to be stuff in between. And then this is where their docking area is. This ship will go away from the game <laughs> temporarily or maybe even permanently. I don't know if you guys like it, I might include that, but, um, there's going to be a lot of stuff that needs to be changed to the ship. Uh, I want to make sure it's module and can be destroyed before I can even put that in the game. Uh, but if not, uh, maybe I'll use it for a storyline or something like that. But it would be pretty cool to set it up where you can go up the steps and to the city or this uh, abandoned location that I've been building. So we've added, and when I say we, it's just really me and uh, <laughs> all the other dev developers that have uh, created the static meshes and that I've got a chance to get my hands on. Um, but everything else has been set up by hand by me. And like I said, anytime I refer to we, it's just me. But here we have a cannon. I don't know. I haven't even figured out location for it yet. It's just kind of sitting on the rocks. But I think I'm going to build like a platform here, uh, looking up out there into the world. But I think the palm tree is in the way. So I'm going to have to move that out of the way. Uh, I know that cannons didn't really had any blocking of trees in front of them because otherwise it'll just be look stupid but i think i left this out for uh, future purposes because i only have one or maybe two i was just testing them out uh, but regardless you know we'll find a good location maybe it'll be like a tower up here that i'll be able to utilize this cliff and build stuff on just remember all this is going to some of the stuff is going to be covered with vegetation uh, some of it's going to be construction things like that but let's do a small flight through um under here going up uh, this hill and like i've mentioned before this is the steps that i was talking about that i'll be able to set up and you can see that there's some vegetation growing i can always put some more dirt in here so that way it looks kind of overgrown and uh, we got some new barrels that are the short and boxes you can use them uh, to collect maybe wood and Maybe you'll find something in there as well. Now uh, here's a cannon I was talking about. So this one right here is probably a better location for anything else. You can see that it's actually like right out into the open. Uh, it's been overgrown and look like some of the plants beginning to reach the height of it. Cause remember this has been here sitting for quite some time now and definitely a better location than what other cannon was. So I'm probably gonna end up moving that cannon up closer to this section over here instead. Let's go ahead and uh, continue with our small flight through. Uh, we have this like little arch over here going into another center like corridor over here that splits into a few sections. So one goes in that direction and this one over here. I'll have to replace this section because this door is part of the other static mesh and you can't really like interact with these doors and I'll have to change that as I continue to build that. But I've just been trying to build certain locations uh, where you might be able to find like loot. Let's say if you walk around here somehow and look under the steps, maybe you'll be able to find a box. Obviously there is none at the moment, but something like that can be added in the future. So just keep an eye out on certain things. And again, the idea of that is just so that way you can explore every single detail and observe how everything was built. Here's a good example. It's just a tree stump here that looks like it was cut because obviously the tree was growing here, so it was in the way. The stump remained, but the tree is gone. And again, as a player, you'll be able to cut those stumps as well if you want to and use it for some sort of a wood resource. And going back, you can see that the flowers are here as well, and you can will be able to pick them up again. Uh, all of these are blueprints. So anything I change for one particular flower here will update everywhere else. If you don't want to do that, you can always rename your blueprint to something else and create a replica or a duplicate of it and it will not be affected by your changes. But remember, if you do have a blueprint that looks like this, um, anytime you do changes, it will affect everything else. Uh, as long as it's the same name and has like the same static mesh within it, I know that it has different namings within your world outliner, but it doesn't matter. So I have four bamboos um, blueprints. So if I change one, it will change for all of them within this world. And I think currently I have, if I were to scroll up, bamboo. Let's go ahead and open that up. So I have about 141 bamboo uh, pieces 
that are blueprints that are in this world and again they will be collectibles and you know you'll be able to cut them down and collect bamboo and build other cool stuff with it so if you were to fly through here i think well in the game itself i can't go through here because whoever created this uh, project with those rock formations uh, the ruins i th think they didn't really create a well designed a collision for this so there's going to be future videos of me showing how to fix that I actually have never done it yet so something going to be new diving in in the future fixing all of that making sure characters can go through it and i don't know if you can do that within that real engine or i have to use a other 3d program but we'll see i'm not 100 sure yet so the cool thing about developing is running through some of these bugs and unfinished portions that you just kind of have to figure out as you develop uh, but as you come around this section over here um there is like you know certain areas that will look like would contain uh maybe boxes or whatnot storage units areas with whatever you might find there in the future so a lot of cool locations uh where you'll be able to like climb up this is not like assassin's creed where you'll be able to jump off and do a flip and land on the sack of hay 50 or 100 meters from the ground up but um, possibly be able to maybe dive from the boards into the water if you're close to it um, i don't know if you guys have any suggestions or ideas let me know i i don't know about jumping off the structures like this and uh, observing but we'll see we'll see what we can do about that stuff i just like trying to keep it more to a realism and uh, i just can't expect anybody jumping off those cliffs from this height and not taking any fall damage uh, regardless of where you're jumping into so i think that's about it except for i've added more vegetation bamboos trees wise around uh, this section of the temple and again i'm trying to build the city slowly toward the temple and um, it's more of a Two different cultures so uh, you can see even the masonry is different so maybe later down the road i will have to change the color of this masonry to this or we'll keep it separate you know uh, don't think all the buildings have to be built using exactly same texture same materials i think it's just kind of odd because you don't see that in real life even if it's ancient structures i'm sure you can come across certain areas that uh, don't look exactly the same but if we we're to uh, zoom in a little bit closer to some of the other locations you can see i have more flowers over here and again all of this stuff is hand placed so it just takes time to place all of these items and again with uh, flowers like this if i were to get really really close to it you can see that they're literally right in the ground and anything that's a little bit darker like this you can see that it's in the ground anything that isn't it means it's floating above the ground and it needs to be adjusted so it takes a lot of time to making sure that it's placed correctly even with the pivot point being in the center it doesn't really help out a lot because i have a lot of hills here and almost none of this landscape is flat so it's always on the slope or always something is going downhill or uphill and uh, it can create a little bit of a challenge to create that but i think so far it's uh, turning out not too bad especially with timing wise but here is a more of a, like a field of flowers and you can see that they're all different colors here uh, more over there in the back and again all of this stuff will be populated even more i'm just trying to keep certain areas open so that way it looks more natural and you know you don't really need to go too crazy in overpopulating everything and making a jungle like there will be certain sections that will be dedicated to heavy jungles like heavy bamboo uh locations with just bamboo around and where you won't be able to go through uh maybe uh quicksand locations where you won't be able to go through it you know you're going to discover it and you'll have to figure out how to get out of it uh, maybe one of those trees will have you know beehive and so there is going to be a lot of stuff implemented into this world so that way you'll be always occupied doing something rather than just running through the landscape and be done all right so let me go ahead and uh, show you quickly a couple other stuff that i've added to this uh, landscape i have a couple or more new trees that i've set up over here in the back that was uh, open uh, land again this has not been touched you can see that it's just an open section 
I haven't put any palm trees or anything like that in this area yet. Uh, but I did, however, put up a couple new stuff over here. So we have bamboo grown over there. Uh, this tree, you can see that has all these dark shadows. Uh, you can change that by selecting your static mesh. And if I do distance, distance uh, field lighting, it should be better. So you can see that what it looks like before with the dark shadows versus how they look like without it. And it looks much more realistic and much better shading. However, this tree is not permanent. It's more like temporary because if you look at the tree branches, they just look horrendous. But it's a good landmark for at the moment. Here's another section of the flowers. You can see that this is what it will look like. And then from here, you can just add these flowers on top if you wanted to, something like that. Uh, but you got to make sure that uh, they all fit in there. And I'm actually downsizing it, not in you know, all the axes, axes. Okay, here we go. I downsize it just a bit. I'm going to rotate this. So interesting thing about the blueprints, they don't actually have their own pivot point. Or not the pivot point, but that they don't have any... Um, snapping that I've uh, so far have seen it doesn't really have one where you can snap to the item you're trying to place I do have to adjust this you can see that it's kind of floating above so to avoid that I'll have to place some of them over here some of it will be above some of it will be right in that static mesh which is totally fine but it looks pretty cool now doesn't it I'm kind of mixing a few things together and then you can create something else out of it and, and again i have more location that needs to be populated you can see the reflation is grown over there but there's nothing around it uh, but the trees the trees i gotta show you those new trees that i have where are they uh, i didn't place too many of them you can see that there's one right here another one over here uh, again all of them are different not of course all of them i try to minimize how many trees i've placed in the one trying to make it have a more of a variety but i ended up placing them more of on the open field rather than within the palm tree jungles but i think i might go back and place a few here and there and i don't think there's any over this side i think there's just palm trees at the moment but the trees are there, so they're obviously going to be more locations that will look like that. Uh, here's my bamboo small forest uh, that's overgrown. Very interesting. I might even cover it more so that way you can't even go through it and you'll have to kind of cut through it uh, to go through this section, let's say, if you're trying to get somewhere. But again, it's just going to take some time to add this stuff and with all these details. Uh, the other new feature I have or that I'm currently working on and hopefully I'll make more of like a speed up videos and how I do it just for fun is corals. I will show you that real quick. We have coral spawn over here. Uh, coral spawn three and four are exactly the same blueprint. The only difference is, is that they are positioned differently and rotated differently. But what's interesting is that they, since they're the same, they actually have different colors, and that's because of my landscape material, that I, not landscape material, but the material that I use for some of these static motions. You can see that they change in color. Not all of them do, because these bigger ones, let's say that these yellow corals that's coming up over here, they don't change because I haven't changed the material itself. That's why they don't change. But I will add some of them that will do that. And I think they look pretty cool because what I like about this is that you could set up these corals just like this, right? And then as you swim as a player, you won't even know the difference between the coral to your left and coral to your right. Just go ahead and press play, Alt P, and shortcut. And now, of course, it's going to take a very long time for it to populate all the grass and all the other good stuff. But once it loads up, I should be able to uh, 
see how well it blends in with the rest of the stuff. Uh, but again, the point of this is to set up coral so that way it will be easier for me to place them in the world and I don't have to spend too much time later down the road setting them up. And look at that, you can see that this uh, particular um, static mesh would need to be cold at a completely different distance. I don't know why it did that, but let's see if we can open this up. Edit blueprint, open a blueprint editor. And that was our coral rock. If I were to select that, all right, I'm going to go ahead here and type in distance. And desired max draw distance is 1500, that's why. So let's change it to about 7500 instead. Let's click compile. Close that off. I don't know if I'm going to have to do this for this one. So let's see if I was correct. Let's go ahead and open that up. We'll select the coral. I mean, technically, since it's a, yep, okay, so good news. We don't, you don't have to do it for every single one. You just need to do it for one main one and it will change it for everywhere else. If you want to have a different cooling distance or desired max draw distance, I recommend renaming your spawn to something else. And I believe it should work if you want to have it separate uh, numbers. But look, let's go ahead and press play now and put it to the test. Okay, so it probably was on that uh, because we. Okay, so let's see if we can do edit on that part and then go to our coral rocks and then here we type actually open this up and we're going to look at our LODs. Uh, I don't think it does have small prop, right? Uh, let's see, small prop, does it have any LODs? It does. So it should technically have that happening. Oh, I didn't save this, that's why. This is very strange because I don't have any other uh, Cooling distance box that has been set up here. Uh, is 7,000 not long enough? So let's do maybe 17,000. Allow cool distance volume. So it's going to do, whoa, that's 175, 17,000. 500, yeah. Compile. Say save. Okay, this is really odd. I don't know why it's doing this, but hopefully I can figure it out. Well, regardless, I will be using these corals and hopefully they'll get fixed. I have no idea why the cool distance on these particular rocks are set that way. Let's uh, close our blueprints for a moment. And so it's not even enabled. I don't know. I don't understand why um, it's going on me like that. Okay, so I have figured out the issue with the squirrel. I've never ran into this problem before, but all I did was simply deleted it from the world and just dropped it all over again, and it works now. So, uh, check this out. Let's go back to this. We have the coral selected. Going back to the distance. And it wasn't the issue that it was not cooling on me, but it was the problem that it did not calculate it. It did not cool at the further distance when I changed this number, right? And I know that I only changed it for the one static mesh and not for all the corals, but it wasn't doing based on the distance. And now, since I have no distance selected, you can see that I can go as far as I want to and it doesn't disappear on me. Let's go ahead and press play and it will test that as well.
you can see that it still stays in the world. So roughly around this area where it should be uh, cooling for the big rock and then maybe right around here we can do for all the corals that's on it. But I think everything at once should be alright to be cold on and off. So to do that, I'm going to head and open this up. I'm going to select my coral rock and I'm going to select actually everything because if you go to viewport you can see that everything is selected. And now for the distance, you do want to change that for all of it. Uh, I guess let's try 7,500 again and see if it'll properly pull the distance for all of it. Make a big screen. I've also added it in a location where I already had fish. So let's see. Probably 7,000 is too much, so let's do let's do 500 to see if that all is. Cause I think 500 is going to be pretty quick, pretty up close, pretty close. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that it's gone, so it will be maybe let's do. Thousand five hundred F eleven Alt eight P. Oh, let's do that again. Water. Something is up with this core. I said, yeah, I did save it in here. All right, let's drop it again. It's very strange behavior. Like, why would it disappear at 3,000? It makes absolutely no sense. So, desire max road, this is 3,500. What about this coral? 5,000. Ah, oh, that's right. Well, let's just save everything and see if that will work. F11, Alt P. If it's still in the world, then I just forgot to save it. Okay, perfect. Right there, you see that? That's what I was looking for. However, some reason disappears and appears at the same time as the rest of it, which is not what I wanted. So I'll go ahead and select all of it again. So, uh, it's interesting how if you do because the different numbers. See that? It's telling you to do it separately. 5,000 because we're like 4,800. It's too much. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. 4,800. So, right where I'm at is where it was cooling, right? So let's go ahead and press Alt P and see if it's going to be further distance. Okay, I can see it cool off and cool back in. Perfect, this is what I wanted. So, I think 5,200, something like that will do. Maybe 5,000 be safe. Because, again, at the end, when you are going to play and swim in the water, you don't want to uh, see that. So, for testing purposes, we would leave it at... 4,800, but for this, I'll do 5,500, so that we will have extra time 
to load it up before it's visible. Perfect. Now if I press play again, F11, and again, that's the whole point of this testing is making sure that some of this stuff right there pulls off. Close, farther, 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 farther. You can't really tell if it's, let's get closer to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, I can't even see it disappear. And boom, it's already there. Isn't that perfect? So with these blueprints like this being set up, I'm not gonna have to worry about them being too many because there will be places in the world, but they will be remembered within the engine of their location on the X, Y, and Z values. Um, regarding of their location, also their tra transformation on the angle. And again, once I change all of these corals, and I can actually show it to you. So here's an example. Uh, we open up a blueprint. Actually, before we do that, this is what I was going to show you. So remember how I said that these can look the same, but they will have different colors. Uh, let's just make the angle a little bit different so that way it stands out. I'll rotate it so that way you guys can see it. Okay, so what we're going to focus on is these uh, little corals over here. And to test this, I'm going to go ahead and open up my blueprint. And since I don't know which coral is where, within this structure anymore on the list. Uh, the best thing you can actually do is just simply select it over here and then now you know which one it is. Uh, what I'm going to do is get rid of this and as you can see my material over here, I would like to keep this content browser still open. I'm going to go ahead and find it within the material folder and this is called corals one material. So I have also corals randomizer main and I also have Corals 1 randomized material, which is this one right here. That's what I need. And if I do that, let's get a little bit closer. All right, that one has been changed. And so is this one. Now this one hasn't been changed. Some of them have been, okay. I know this one has been okay what else hasn't been changed here oh the big ones that's right so this one is corals one main which is going to be corals randomizer main there we go what about this one corals four main static so there'll be corals four randomizer main i gotta make sure it's the correct ones and did you see that they changed the color isn't that pretty cool look at that it's purple and as soon as I put this one on this is gonna be nice it's gonna create so many different cool um, corals so this one is three coral three main randomizer and I created these a while back I think last year I worked on these and uh, look at this result it's gonna look so nice with different variations I recommend everybody using this this is gonna be nice with all the different colors here is a good example too. have material one seeing it right here first one that one's gonna get changed this one's gonna get changed and then i think not that one already has it so it's the the bulky parts that i have not changed and that's it let's go ahead and control shift s to save this all and check this out now if i were to work with one right which is going to be this one. Got to get closer to see if it's changing it or not. Can you guys see it? Yeah, it's changing. Did you see that? It's changing on this one. And if I were to get closer to this one, Yeah, it's changing it as well. If I were to move it, say right here, now you have this coral yellow and this one. First, let's close, uh, slow this down.
was a streaming uh, pool, right? Yeah. Let's try it again. Oh, here we go. Our streaming pool size. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, you can see that that this one is now looks different, and it actually changes even based on rotation, which is really nice. Now, of course, I gotta make sure that this sits in the ground like this, all the way in. And it's okay for some of these scrolls going to the ground. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that they, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe that part does, but. Here we go. Let's do it like this. Rotate it, rotate it. Uh, okay. And of course, I gotta wait for the other corals to spawn. I think that's perfectly fine that they grow into the ground. I think it needs to be. Uh... Ah, there's. That's why, because the the bottom part was right here. Here we go. I'm going to leave it like this. It's fully into the ground. Maybe you can swim a little bit under it if you wanted to. Maybe a fish can live there, you know. And then this one can stay right here, right next to it. I mean, see why not? Or I can move it farther away. And then have it sitting in this particular angle now. So they don't look exactly the same. And remember, once I start adding other corals like this next to each other, uh, you won't even be able to tell that this one is exactly the same as that one because I can always then continue to add other cool things to each individual. And then once you select this one, I think in order for it to not repeat what's going on over there, you would have to go back to your coral spawn here. And then when you save it, you don't want to say save as, and then that way you can create a new coral spawn that will be different. So let's say you want to add something to it. Well, the problem with this is that if you were to add another item like this, or a different coral, let's say you want to get rid of one, but you want to still remain, keep the same stone, but let's say you want to get 20 of those. In order for that to work, you'd want to create a new save as, and then rename it. That way you'll have a second version of it. And when you do, then you can open up your coral spawn four or whatnot, and then create something else. So, a lot of different ideas so you don't have to start from scratch you know you can just move a couple things around rotate it maybe add another one and then you just continue building up so this could be like a live version of the coral and then you can add 30 more around here and then continue adding and adding and maybe even another rock formation and then just expand it so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this and you can speed up the process of this so i will focus on this probably in the future videos i was thinking maybe making like a hundred of those and just talk about it and then do it and then we can put them into the world so let's go ahead and save that and the last thing i was going to show you guys uh, the last feature for right now that hasn't been really went over i added a couple new stuff to the folder content that's going to be added in the future uh, videos within like a, a, a month or so i uh, should be able to catch up to that stuff that i just uploaded uh, but it's going to be a, more of like a new uh, not a biome but a, a location where you can collect certain resources that are only dedicated in these locations and I'll show you what I'm talking about let's go ahead and open up mega scans I'm gonna do static mesh so though it's easier to kind of fo fo follow it uh, we have a lot of new vegetation a lot of new flowers I don't know why it looks so bright like this open one I hope it doesn't look as bad Oh no, what is going on with the textures? There's always something with these within these blueprints textures. Every time I import stuff, there's always extra work that needs to be done. This is definitely not the colors. Oh, you know what? I might be missing a... Um... I'll have to look into it, the blueprint itself. So I can't really go in too much into the details with these mega scan items. Who knows what's missing here, what's going on? yet i'm very surprised to see that these uh static meshes look like that but i'll get back to them uh fixing wise but let's go ahead and just look at it real quick what i've got here so static mesh i was going to show you i got a lot of new vegetation so we have here we go this is better uh different vegetation 
I have mushrooms, so this is going to be in the future. We'll have dead tree stumps with mushrooms and lots of different uh, vegetation. Now, lots of new flowers as well. And I uh, think what else we have? The tree stumps, yeah. A couple of coconuts, which is going to be part of the palm trees. Uh, different mushrooms, new stone formations. So I'm going to get rid of what I have and replace it. Uh, right, what else? What else we got here? And yeah, all these plants. I can keep on going and scrolling, but you can see that there's just lots of new stuff to go over through. Let's see if I can do maybe a small scale. Uh, a lot of new Thai beach formation. And a lot of stone debris. So it's going to be a lot of cool stuff that's going to be added and replaced. But yeah, I hope you guys like this uh, new update. And I'll be coming back with the next one very shortly. And I'll see you guys in the next video.